This is God's message to Hosea son of Beeri. It came to him during the royal reigns of Judah's kings Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. This was also the time that Jeroboam son of Josh was king over Israel. The first time God spoke to Hosea he said, Find a whore and marry her. Make this whore the mother of your children. And here's why, this whole country has become a whorehouse, unfaithful to me, God. Hosea did it. He picked Gomer daughter of Deblaim. She got pregnant and gave him a son. Then God told him, name him Jezreel. It won't be long now before. I'll make the people of Israel pay for the massacre at Jezreel. I'm calling it quits on the kingdom of Israel. Payday is coming. I'm going to chop Israel's bows and arrows. Into kindling in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer got pregnant again. This time she had a daughter. God told Hosea, name this one no mercy. I'm fed up with Israel. I've run out of mercy. There's no more forgiveness. Judah's another story. I'll continue having mercy on them. I'll save them. It will be their God who saves them. Not their armaments and armies. Not their horsepower and manpower. After Gomer had weaned no mercy, she got pregnant yet again and had a son. God said, Name him nobody. You've become nobodies to me. And I, God, am a nobody to you. But down the road the population of Israel is going to explode past counting, like sand on the ocean beaches. In the very place where they were once named nobody, they will be named God somebody. Everybody in Judah and everybody in Israel will be assembled as one people. They'll choose a single leader. There'll be no stopping them, a great day in Jezreel. Rename your brothers, God somebody. Rename your sisters, all mercy. Haul your mother into court. Accuse her. She's no longer my wife. I'm no longer her husband. Tell her to quit dressing like a whore. Displaying her breasts for sale. If she refuses, I'll rip off her clothes. And expose her, naked as a newborn. I'll turn her skin into dried out leather. Her body into a badlands landscape. A rack of bones in the desert. I'll have nothing to do with her children. Born one and all in a whorehouse. Face it, your mother's been a whore. Bringing bastard children into the world. She said, I'm off to see my lovers. They'll wine and dine me. Dress and caress me. Perfume and adorn me. But I'll fix her. I'll dump her in a field of thistles. Then lose her in a dead-end alley. She'll go on the hunt for her lovers. But not bring down a single one. She'll look high and low. But won't find a one. Then she'll say. I'm going back to my husband, the one I started out with. That was a better life by far than this one. She didn't know that it was I all along. Who whined and dined and adorned her. That I was the one who dressed her up. In the big city fashions and jewelry. That she wasted on wild ball orgies. I'm about to bring her up short, no more whining and dining. Silk lingerie and gowns are a thing of the past. I'll expose her genitals to the public. All her fly-by-night lovers will be helpless to help her. Party time is over. I'm calling a halt to the whole business. Her wild weekends and unholy holidays. I'll wreck her sumptuous gardens and ornamental fountains. Of which she bragged, whoring paid for all this. 
they will soon be dumping grounds for garbage. Feeding grounds for stray dogs and cats. I'll make her pay for her indulgence in promiscuous religion. All that sensuous ball worship. And all the promiscuous sex that went with it. Stalking her lovers, dressed to kill. And not a thought for me. God's message. And now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start all over again. I'm taking her back out into the wilderness. Where we had our first date, and I'll court her. I'll give her bouquets of roses. I'll turn Heartbreak Valley into acres of hope. She'll respond like she did as a young girl. Those days when she was fresh out of Egypt. At that time, this is God's message still. You'll address me, dear husband. Never again will you address me. My slave master. I'll wash your mouth out with soap. Get rid of all the dirty false god names. Not so much as a whisper of those names again. At the same time I'll make a peace treaty between you. And wild animals and birds and reptiles. And get rid of all weapons of war. Think of it. Safe from beasts and bullies. And then I'll marry you for good, forever. I'll marry you true and proper, in love and tenderness. Yes, I'll marry you and neither leave you nor let you go. You'll know me, God, for who I really am. On the very same day, I'll answer, this is God's message. I'll answer the sky, sky will answer earth. Earth will answer grain and wine and olive oil. And they'll all answer Jezreel. I'll plant her in the good earth. I'll have mercy on no mercy. I'll say to nobody, you're my dear somebody. And he'll say, you're my God. Then God ordered me, start all over, love your wife again. Your wife who's in bed with her latest boyfriend, your cheating wife. Love her the way I, God, love the Israelite people. Even as they flirt and party with every God that takes their fancy. I did it. I paid good money to get her back. It cost me the price of a slave. Then I told her, from now on you're living with me. No more whoring, no more sleeping around. You're living with me and I'm living with you. The people of Israel are going to live a long time. Stripped of security and protection. Without religion and comfort. Godless and prayerless. But in time they'll come back, these Israelites. Come back looking for their God and their David King. They'll come back chastened to reverence. Before God and His good gifts, ready for the end of the story of His love. Attention all Israelites. God's message. God indicts the whole population. No one is faithful. No one loves. No one knows the first thing about God. All this cussing and lying and killing, theft and loose sex. Sheer anarchy, one murder after another. And because of all this, the very land itself weeps. And everything in it is grief-stricken. Animals in the fields and birds on the wing. Even the fish in the sea are listless, lifeless. But don't look for someone to blame. No finger pointing. You, priest, are the one in the dock. You stumble around in broad daylight. And then the prophets take over and stumble all night. Your mother is as bad as you. My people are ruined. Because they don't know what's right or true. Because you've turned your back on knowledge. I've turned my back on you priests. Because you refuse to recognize the revelation of God. I'm no longer recognizing your children. 
The more priests, the more sin. They traded in their glory for shame. They pig out on my people's sins. They can't wait for the latest in evil. The result, you can't tell the people from the priests. The priests from the people. I'm on my way to make them both pay. And take the consequences of the bad lives they've lived. They'll eat and be as hungry as ever. Have sex and get no satisfaction. They walked out on me, their God. For a life of rutting with whores. Wine and whiskey. Leave my people in a stupor. They ask questions of a dead tree. Expect answers from a sturdy walking stick. Drunk on sex, they can't find their way home. They've replaced their god with their genitals. They worship on the tops of mountains. Make a picnic out of religion. Under the oaks and elms on the hills. They stretch out and take it easy. Before you know it, your daughters are whores. And the wives of your sons are sleeping around. But I'm not going after your whoring daughters. Or the adulterous wives of your sons. It's the men who pick up the whores that I'm after. The men who worship at the holy whorehouses. A stupid people, ruined by whores. You've ruined your own life, Israel. But don't drag Judah down with you. Don't go to the sex shrine at Gilgal. Don't go to that sin city Bethel. Don't go around saying, God bless you, and not mean it. Taking God's name in vain. Israel is stubborn as a mule. How can God lead him like a lamb to open pasture? Ephraim is addicted to idols. Let him go. When the beer runs out. It's sex, sex, and more sex. Bold and sordid debauchery. How they love it. The whirlwind has them in its clutches. Their sex worship leaves them finally impotent. Listen to this, priests. Attention, people of Israel. Royal family, all ears. You're in charge of justice around here. But what have you done? Exploited people at Mizpah. Ripped them off on Tabor. Victimized them at Shittim. I'm going to punish the lot of you. I know you, Ephraim, inside and out. Yes, Israel, I see right through you. Ephraim, you've played your sex and religion games long enough. All Israel is thoroughly polluted. They couldn't turn to God if they wanted to. Their evil life is a bad habit. Every breath they take is a whore's breath. They wouldn't recognize God if they saw me. Bloated by arrogance, big as a house. They're a public disgrace. The lot of them, Israel, Ephraim, Judah. Lurching and weaving down their guilty streets when they decide to get their lives together and go off looking for God once again they'll find it's too late I, God, will be long gone they've played fast and loose with me for too long filling the country with their bastard offspring a plague of locusts will devastate their violated land Blow the ram's horn chauffeur in Gibeah. The bugle in Rama. Signal the invasion of Sin City. Scare the daylights out of Benjamin. Ephraim will be left wasted. A lifeless moonscape. I'm telling it straight, the unvarnished truth. To the tribes of Israel. Israel's rulers are crooks and thieves cheating the people of their land and i'm angry good and angry every inch of their bodies is going to feel my anger brutal ephraim is himself brutalized 
a taste of his own medicine. He was so determined to do it his own worthless way. Therefore I'm pus to Ephraim. Dry rot in the house of Judah. When Ephraim saw he was sick, and Judah saw his pus-filled sores, Ephraim went running to Assyria, went for help to the big king. But he can't heal you. He can't cure your oozing sores. I'm a grizzly charging Ephraim. A grizzly with cubs charging Judah. I'll rip them to pieces, yes, I will. No one can stop me now. I'll drag them off. No one can help them. Then I'll go back to where I came from. Until they come to their senses. When they finally hit rock bottom. Maybe they'll come looking for me. Come on, let's go back to God. He hurt us, but he'll heal us. He hit us hard. But he'll put us right again. In a couple of days we'll feel better. By the third day he'll have made us brand new. Alive and on our feet. Fit to face him. We're ready to study God. Eager for God knowledge. As sure as dawn breaks. So sure is his daily arrival. He comes as rain comes. As spring rain refreshing the ground. What am I to do with you, Ephraim? What do I make of you, Judah? Your declarations of love last no longer. Then morning mist and pre-dawn dew. That's why I use prophets to shake you to attention. Why my words cut you to the quick. To wake you up to my judgment. Blazing like light. I'm after love that lasts, not more religion. I want you to know God, not go to more prayer meetings. You broke the covenant, just like Adam. You broke faith with me, ungrateful wretches. Gilead has become crime city. Blood on the sidewalks, blood on the streets. It used to be robbers who mugged pedestrians. Now it's gangs of priests. Assaulting worshippers on their way to Shechem. Nothing is sacred to them. I saw a shocking thing in the country of Israel. Ephraim worshipping in a religious whorehouse. And Israel in the mud right there with him. You're as bad as the worst of them, Judah. You've been sowing wild oats. Now it's harvest time. Every time I gave Israel a fresh start. Wiped the slate clean and got them going again. Ephraim soon filled the slate with new sins. The treachery of Samaria written out in bold print. Two-faced and double-tongued. They steal you blind, pick you clean. It never crosses their mind. That I keep account of their every crime. Their mud spattered head to toe with the residue of sin. I see who they are and what they've done. They entertain the king with their evil circus. Delight the princes with their acrobatic lies. They're a bunch of overheated adulterers. Like an oven that holds its heat. From the kneading of the dough. To the rising of the bread. On the royal holiday the princes get drunk. On wine and the frenzy of the mocking mob. They're like wood stoves, red hot with lust. Through the night their passion is banked. In the morning it blazes up, flames hungrily licking. Murderous and volcanic. They incinerate their rulers. Their kings fall one by one. And no one pays any attention to me. Ephraim mingles with the pagans, dissipating himself. Ephraim is half-baked. Strangers suck him dry. But he doesn't even notice. His hair has turned gray. He doesn't notice. Bloated by arrogance, 
big as a house. Israel's a public disgrace. Israel lumbers along oblivious to God. Despite all the signs, ignoring God. Ephraim is bird-brained. Mindless, clueless. First chirping after Egypt. Then fluttering after Assyria. I'll throw my net over them. I'll clip their wings. I'll teach them to mind me. Doom. They've run away from home. Now they're really in trouble. They've defied me. And I'm supposed to help them. While they feed me a line of lies. Instead of crying out to me in heartfelt prayer. They whoop it up in bed with their whores. Gash themselves bloody in their sex and religion orgies. But turn their backs on me. I'm the one who gave them good minds and healthy bodies. And how am I repaid? With evil scheming. They turn, but not to me. Turn here, then there, like a weather vane. Their rulers will be cut down, murdered. Just deserts for their mocking blasphemies. And the final sentence. Ridicule in the court of world opinion. Blow the trumpet. Sound the alarm. Vultures are circling over God's people. Who have broken my covenant. And defied my revelation. Predictably, Israel cries out, My God. We know you. But they don't act like it. Israel will have nothing to do with what's good. And now the enemy is after them. They crown kings, but without asking me. They set up princes but don't let me in on it. Instead, they make idols, using silver and gold. Idols that will be their ruin. Throw that gold calf god on the trash heap, Samaria. I'm seething with anger against that rubbish. How long before they shape up? And they're Israelites. A sculptor made that thing. It's not God. That Samaritan calf. Will be broken to bits. Look at them. Planting wind seeds. They'll harvest tornadoes. Wheat with no head. Produces no flour. And even if it did. Strangers would gulp it down. Israel is swallowed up and spit out. Among the pagans they're a piece of junk. They trotted off to Assyria. Why, even wild donkeys stick to their own kind. But donkey Ephraim goes out and pays to get lovers. Now, because of their whoring life among the pagans. I'm going to gather them together and confront them. They're going to reap the consequences soon. Feel what it's like to be oppressed by the big king. Ephraim has built a lot of altars. And then uses them for sinning. Can you believe it? Altars for sinning. I write out my revelation for them in detail. And they pretend they can't read it. They offer sacrifices to me. And then they feast on the meat. God is not pleased. I'm fed up, I'll keep remembering their guilt. I'll punish their sins. And send them back to Egypt. Israel has forgotten his maker. And gotten busy making palaces. Judah has gone in for a lot of fortress cities. I'm sending fire on their cities. To burn down their fortifications. Don't waste your life in wild orgies, Israel. Don't party away your life with the heathen. You walk away from your God at the drop of a hat. And like a horse sell yourself promiscuously. At every sex and religion party on the street. All that party food won't fill you up. You'll end up hungrier than ever. At this rate you'll not last long in God's land. 
Some of you are going to end up bankrupt in Egypt. Some of you will be disillusioned in Assyria. As refugees in Egypt and Assyria, you won't have much chance to worship God. Sentenced to rations of bread and water. And your souls polluted by the spirit dirty air. You'll be starved for God. Exiled from God's own country. Will you be homesick for the old holy days? Will you miss festival worship of God? Be warned. When you escape from the frying pan of disaster, you'll fall into the fire of Egypt. Egypt will give you a fine funeral. What use will all your God-inspired silver be then? As you eke out a living in a field of weeds. Time's up. Doom's at the doorstep. It's payday. Did Israel bluster, the prophet is crazy. The man of the spirit is nuts. Think again. Because of your great guilt. You're in big trouble. The prophet is looking out for Ephraim. Working under God's orders. But everyone is trying to trip him up. He's hated right in God's house, of all places. The people are going from bad to worse. Rivaling that ancient and unspeakable crime at Gibeah. God's keeping track of their guilt. He'll make them pay for their sins. Long ago when I came upon Israel, it was like finding grapes out in the desert. When I found your ancestors, it was like finding a fig tree bearing fruit for the first time. But when they arrived at Baal Peor, that pagan shrine, they took to sin like a pig to filth, wallowing in the mud with their newfound friends. Ephraim is fickle and scattered, like a flock of blackbirds. Their beauty dissipated in confusion and clamor. Frenetic and noisy, frigid and barren. And nothing to show for it, neither conception nor childbirth. Even if they did give birth, I'd declare them. Unfit parents and take away their children. Yes indeed, a black day for them. When I turn my back and walk off. I see Ephraim letting his children run wild. He might just as well take them and kill them outright. Give it to them, God. But what? Give them a dried up womb and shriveled breasts. All their evil came out into the open. At the pagan shrine at Gilgal. Oh, how I hated them there. Because of their evil practices. I'll kick them off my land. I'm wasting no more love on them. Their leaders are a bunch of rebellious adolescents. Ephraim is hit hard. Roots withered, no more fruit. Even if by some miracle they had children. The dear babies wouldn't live, I'd make sure of that. My God has washed his hands of them. They wouldn't listen. They're doomed to be wanderers. Vagabonds among the godless nations. Israel was once a lush vine. Bountiful in grapes. The more lavish the harvest. The more promiscuous the worship. The more money they got. The more they squandered on gods in their own image. Their sweet smiles are sheer lies. They're guilty as sin. God will smash their worship shrines. Pulverize their God images. They go around saying. Who needs a king? We couldn't care less about God. So why bother with a king? What difference would he make? They talk big. Lie through their teeth. Make deals. But their high-sounding words turn out to be empty words, litter in the gutters. The people of Samaria travel over to Crime City to worship the golden calf god. They go all out, 
prancing and hollering. Taken in by their showman priests. They act so important around the calf god. But are oblivious to the sham, the shame. They have plans to take it to Assyria. Present it as a gift to the great king. And so Ephraim makes a fool of himself. Disgraces Israel with his stupid idols. Samaria is history. Its king. Is a dead branch floating down the river. Israel's favorite sin centers. Will all be torn down. Thistles and crabgrass. Will decorate their ruined altars. Then they'll say to the mountains, bury us. And to the hills, fall on us. You got your start in sin at Gibeah. That ancient, unspeakable, shocking sin. And you've been at it ever since. And Gibeah will mark the end of it. In a war to end all the sinning. I'll come to teach them a lesson. Nations will gang up on them. Making them learn the hard way. The sum of Gibeah plus Gibeah. Ephraim was a trained heifer. That loved to thresh. Passing by and seeing her strong, sleek neck. I wanted to harness Ephraim. Put Ephraim to work in the fields. Judah plowing, Jacob harrowing. Sow righteousness. Reap love. It's time to till the ready earth. It's time to dig in with God. Until he arrives. With righteousness ripe for harvest. But instead you plowed wicked ways. Reaped a crop of evil and ate a salad of lies. You thought you could do it all on your own. Flush with weapons and manpower. But the volcano of war will erupt among your people. All your defense posts will be leveled. As viciously as King Shalman. Leveled the town of Beth Arba. When mothers and their babies. Were smashed on the rocks. That's what's ahead for you, you so-called people of God. Because of your off-the-charts evil. Some morning you're going to wake up. And find Israel, king and kingdom, a blank, nothing. When Israel was only a child, I loved him. I called out, my son. Called him out of Egypt. But when others called him. He ran off and left me. He worshipped the popular sex gods. He played at religion with toy gods. Still, I stuck with him. I led Ephraim. I rescued him from human bondage. But he never acknowledged my help. Never admitted that I was the one pulling his wagon. That I lifted him, like a baby, to my cheek. That I bent down to feed him. Now he wants to go back to Egypt or go over to Assyria. Anything but return to me. That's why his cities are unsafe, the murder rate skyrockets. And every plan to improve things falls to pieces. My people are hell-bent on leaving me. They pray to God Baal for help. He doesn't lift a finger to help them. But how can I give up on you, Ephraim? How can I turn you loose, Israel? How can I leave you to be ruined like Adma? Devastated like luckless Seaboim? I can't bear to even think such thoughts. My insides churn in protest. And so I'm not going to act on my anger. I'm not going to destroy Ephraim. And why? Because I am God and not a human. I'm the Holy One and I'm here, in your very midst. The people will end up following God. I will roar like a lion. Oh, how I'll roar. My frightened children will come running from the west. Like frightened birds they'll come from Egypt. From Assyria like scared doves. 
I'll move them back into their homes. God's word, Ephraim tells lies right and left. Not a word of Israel can be trusted. Judah, meanwhile, is no better. Addicted to cheap gods. His master will do to him what he has done. Ephraim, obsessed with God fantasies. Chases ghosts and phantoms. He tells lies non-stop soul-destroying lies. Both Ephraim and Judah made deals with Assyria and tried to get an inside track with Egypt. God is bringing charges against Israel. Jacob's children are hauled into court to be punished. In the womb, that heel, Jacob, got the best of his brother. When he grew up, he tried to get the best of God. But God would not be bested. God bested him. Brought to his knees. Jacob wept and prayed. God found him at Bethel. That's where he spoke with him. God is God of the angel armies. God revealed, God known. What are you waiting for? Return to your God. Commit yourself in love, in justice. Wait for your God. And don't give up on Him, ever. The businessmen engage in wholesale fraud. They love to rip people off. Ephraim boasted, Look, I'm rich. I've made it big. And look how well I've covered my tracks. Not a hint of fraud, not a sign of sin. But not so fast. I'm God. Your God. Your God from the days in Egypt. I'm going to put you back to living in tents. As in the old days when you worshipped in the wilderness. I speak through the prophets. To give clear pictures of the way things are. Using prophets, I tell revealing stories. I show Gilead rampant with religious scandal and Gilgal teeming with empty-headed religion. I expose their worship centers as stinking piles of garbage in their gardens. Are you going to repeat the life of your ancestor Jacob? He ran off guilty to Aram, then sold his soul to get ahead, and made it big through treachery and deceit. Your real identity is formed through God-sent prophets who led you out of Egypt and served as faithful pastors. As it is, Ephraim has continually and inexcusably insulted God. Now he has to pay for his life-destroying ways. God once let loose against Ephraim, a terrifying sentence against Israel, caught and convicted. In the lewd sex worship of Baal, they died. And now they're back in the sin business again. Manufacturing God images they can use. Religion customized to taste. Professionals see to it. Anything you want in a God you can get. Can you believe it? They sacrifice live babies to these dead gods. Kill living babies and kiss golden calves. And now there's nothing left to these people. Hollow men, desiccated women. Like scraps of paper blown down the street. Like smoke in a gusty wind. I'm still your God. The God who saved you out of Egypt. I'm the only real God you've ever known. I'm the one and only God who delivers. I took care of you during the wilderness hard times. Those years when you had nothing. I took care of you, took care of all your needs. Gave you everything you needed. You were spoiled. You thought you didn't need me. You forgot me. I'll charge them like a lion. Like a leopard stalking in the brush. I'll jump them like a sow grizzly robbed of her cubs. I'll rip out their guts. Coyotes will make a meal of them. 
Crows will clean their bones. I'm going to destroy you, Israel. Who is going to stop me? Where is your trusty king you thought would save you? Where are all the local leaders you wanted so badly? All these rulers you insisted on having. Demanding, give me a king. Give me leaders. Well, long ago I gave you a king, but I wasn't happy about it. Now, fed up, I've gotten rid of him. I have a detailed record of your infidelities. Ephraim sin documented and stored in a safe deposit box. When birth pangs signaled it was time to be born. Ephraim was too stupid to come out of the womb. When the passage into life opened up. He didn't show. Shall I intervene and pull them into life? Shall I snatch them from a certain death? Who is afraid of you, death? Who cares about your threats, tomb? In the end I'm abolishing regret. Banishing sorrow. Even though Ephraim ran wild. The black sheep of the family. God's tornado is on its way. Roaring out of the desert. It will devastate the country. Leaving a trail of ruin and wreckage. The cities will be gutted. Dear possessions gone for good. Now Samaria has to face the charges. Because she has rebelled against her God. Her people will be killed, babies smashed on the rocks. Pregnant women ripped open. O oh Israel, come back. Return to your God. You're down but you're not out. Prepare your confession. And come back to God. Pray to Him, take away our sin. Accept our confession. Receive as restitution. Our repentant prayers. Assyria won't save us. Horses won't get us where we want to go. We'll never again say, our God. To something we've made or made up. You're our last hope. Is it not true? That in you the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their waywardness. I will love them lavishly. My anger is played out. I will make a fresh start with Israel. He'll burst into bloom like a crocus in the spring. He'll put down deep oak tree roots. He'll become a forest of oaks. He'll become splendid like a giant sequoia. His fragrance like a grove of cedars. Those who live near him will be blessed by him. Be blessed and prosper like golden grain. Everyone will be talking about them. Spreading their fame as the vintage children of God. Ephraim is finished with gods that are no gods. From now on I'm the one who answers and satisfies him. I am like a luxuriant fruit tree. Everything you need is to be found in me. If you want to live well, make sure you understand all of this. If you know what's good for you, you'll learn this inside and out. God's paths get you where you want to go. Right living people walk them easily. Wrong living people are always tripping and stumbling.